to paint and I wanted to let you guys join me. I'm still getting some stuff moved around here so um, I haven't done a small little laurel in a while and that was what I was feeling feeling inspired to do. So I've got all my paints out here and that's what we're going to work on. I've got just a small flat brush and that's what I'm going to be using and I don't even know what colors I'm going to use yet. I got some new paints so I've been playing around with them a lot lately so I may just end up who knows what I may end up doing. I have no plan but if you are here and you can hear and see everything okay, I would love it if you would just leave me a comment and let me know so that I can, can tell that everything is working before I get started with the actual painting part. And Brenda is here and says she can hear everything well. I'm so glad. I got a new microphone, so I'm excited about using it. <laughs> new gadgets. I'm just going to start with some burnt umber. No, burnt sienna, sorry. And let's just kind of map out where we want our little flowers to live here. taking a little break and lately I have been doing some charcoal work which is totally new I've never done that before I actually sold one of my paintings that I did that was um, uh, Kel said I sounded better without the mic I haven't done this without the mic <laughs> sure I've got this set up right y'all. Let's see settings. Does that help? Let me know if that helps. It's a very soft sound. Well I don't I usually don't speak very loudly anyway so either I don't have my microphone turned up enough or I need to move it closer to me. Maybe that's it. I'm going to move it over here. Okay, let me know if you can hear that okay. Most of what I'm going to do, you don't really have to hear me for, so. Okay, Robin says that's better. I just didn't have it close enough to me. That's probably my problem. And since it's been a while since I've done a live video, I've got to get back into this setup here. Get all my ducks in a row. So I know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, sounds like a fan is on. I don't have, I wish I did have a fan on. I am hot. But I just finished my walk outside. Um, but my computer does have a fan, so it may be my, coming from my computer. So, anyway, let's just paint. Okay, so I'm just going to start with kind of sketching out something with, with my brush. been a while since I've done anything like this. So in my brain I'm placing flowers in spots that I think 
I think they'll look good in. So when I make these that look um, sort of like a triangle, that's going to be a lily. And these little round ones will be roses. And then I'm going to make some bigger round ones, and those will be my hydrangeas. So they're going to be they're going to be in there too. And I want this to kind of spill over this direction. Let's do another hydrangea here. I'm going to fill that in. This is a little five by seven canvas. It's just a canvas board. And I think I saw someone ask if this was a glass palette, and it is. It's just a giant piece of glass that came out of um, a building that was going to be thrown away, and a friend of mine kept it for me and asked if I wanted to use it for anything, and so I've just got it here on top of my work table, and I use it for my palette. Alright, I think I need one more. Let's make this one a hydrangea too. Okay, so there's three hydrangeas, five little roses here. I'm going to add another lily. I like to do things in odd numbers. And then maybe, so that'll be a hydrangea, that will be a hydrangea. This will be a lily, this will be a lily. And then those will be my, maybe tuck another rose in, about right there. And for those of you who are new to me and my page, I am a mixed media artist and I most often paint with acrylics. I like to use a palette knife, which is this little gadget here. But I also like to use a brush, and sometimes I add paper or other things to my paintings other than just paint. I also like to use um, just unexpected things sometimes in my paintings. Okay, so this is how I've got this mapped out. And... I'm going to go ahead and put in some something that's going to be like a little shadow under here. Okay. So I'm going to start with some blue. I'm going to have blue hydrangeas. Let's have some yellow lilies and of course I'm going to need green so I'll get out some sap green and hmm, my roses I think I'm going to do a pink background. So I'm going to do my roses sort of like a white. So let's just start with what we got here and move from there. Okay. Robin says, I use glass trays from old microwaves for palettes. That is an awesome idea. hydrangeas. Since I've got my shadow here, I'm going to have some light coming from over this direction a little bit more than, than anywhere else. I 
and a lot of people ask me about <laughs> putting my background in last. I do that a lot of times and that's what I'm planning to do with this one. the start. See, Julie's asking me about the Artist Loft heavy body paint. She finds them super slippery. They are, um, this is what I'm using here. This is a professional number three. I don't think I've tried the number one. But, um, your paint is definitely either going to, to help you or to hinder you. Also, if you're new to my page, I paint impressionistically, so I don't do things that look hyper-realistic or, or anything like that. Um, uh, Julie says, can't afford the number three. Well, it does make a difference um, when you're using your paints. Um, let me get some white paint out. And um, I know that it's hard when you can't afford what you want to use. Maybe you could try adding some gel medium and see if that helps you. kind of fill in these little rose areas with just a little bit of this and then I'm going to come back and work on them some more. And I'm going to go back to my brush in just a minute. I'm going to do a little bit of both. background. What do I want to use? I think I want it to be sort of a pretty pink background. So let's see what happens when I do this. A lot of this is going to be covered up with my greenery in a minute, but I'm just going to get this loosely popped in here for my background. Then, 
let's see. I'm going to pull down some of that brightness. To make my shadow, I'm going to go with some green mixed in here with my pink. Okay. I'm liking that. It's looking pretty good. Let's work on adding a little bit of greenery in here. So let's just put some, this is sap green, just the indication of little leaves here and there and I go back and forth with really dark and then I add a little white and lighten it up. going to overdo it with my greenery because I want it to be a little bit airy and loose. Okay, now hmm, this container here is, I've got to think about what I want it to be because I'm not sure yet. I'm going to go back in here and work on my hydrangeas a little bit more. get my knife out and do some of these little roses. And since I already put down that burnt sienna, I can use it to help give me a little bit of depth in there. I don't know if you guys know it or not, but I have had my membership groups open for several weeks now, and I called it Open Summer because I thought it would be a great time for people to get creative, and um, we're actually about to 
closed the creative community on Thursday to new members. It's open right now. You can join through Thursday. And my business group, which is called the Bluebird Society, is also going to be closing on the 30th of this month. So if you guys have been wanting to join either one of those, now is a great time to do that. I think I want to do this container in like blue and white. I think that would be pretty. I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna get some ultramarine. You can find it really quickly. Whoops. Okay, so this is a blue. It's a little bit different from the blue that I'm using. It's a little bit darker. my knife for this. This might get tricky. <laughs> but I'm just going to try just using some of this on my knife and let's just kind of put in a little motif. I'm just going to make it up. Okay, so it's looking pretty gross right now, but everything always goes through that stage. <laughs> everything that I paint anyway. Okay, so now let's take some of this blue. Manganese blue is what this one is. And we'll just kind of tap it around in there. take just some white. I'm going to use my knife for this too. I should have cleaned my knife first, but it's okay. Actually, I need some more white paint. Okay. So, we're just going to Put the white in there in between the blue spots. I may have to get a brush. I think this is going to go on a little too thickly. And I want to be able to kind of blend some of them together a little bit. I'm just going to get some white on here and then I'm going to get my brush out. I'm going 
we'll use a smaller one, a little round brush. And that will help me have a little more control. I'm going to have to go back and forth until I get it looking the way I want it to look. But it's getting there. And I need to pull some of this greenery down over the edge just a little bit and let it overlap. Let's go back and take, hmm, let's take a good bit of bright white. This is one thing I like about acrylics is when it does dry quickly, then you can layer much faster than you could if you were using oils. I feel like I'm, I'm losing some of my design here, so let's go back with some blue. Thank you, Robin. What green am I using? I'm using sap green. Okay, I think I'm going to lighten up a little bit of this pink. I'm going to go back and add a little bit more to my hydrangeas because I just don't feel like they are 
as happy as I want him to be. I think it's partly because the brush I was using was kind of big. Okay, that one's better. Let me work on this one a little bit more. Okay, and I need to put a little bit of some of this burnt sienna right here in my lilies. Maybe a little contrast in the center of some of these roses, just a little bit. Okay, and I think that one done. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying. I haven't I haven't been looking at my comments at all because I was concentrating <laughs> on painting so much. Let's see. Um let me go back up and see if you guys asked some questions that I didn't see. Bobby says, how do you paint over your canvas again and again? I started a tutorial and had to come back to it. And by then it was dry and crusty. <laughs> and when I started to paint over it, it was impossible to use my palette knife and get that look. Yeah, I, I kind of do a wet on wet. It does dry some when I paint. But for the most part, um, I paint quickly. So with my acrylics, I don't usually leave it and come back to it. It does make it hard sometimes, especially if you've got a lot of texture when you're doing that. Let's see. Thank you guys for your sweet comments. Um, and 
plastic cases. I use an old heavy glass from a table. You need to mist paint frequently and I mist when I quit and cover it with saran wrap for the next day. That's a good tip. Thank you Catherine and Patty and Tina. Um, and Robin. You're very welcome. So this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something. And this little painting, I'm going to sign it and it will be available on my website for purchase. Um, if you guys are interested in more of my painting tutorials or maybe taking a class or even purchasing some of my art, you can head to my website. It is art by Amanda Hilburn.com. And there's one L in Hilburn. So let me see if I can type it out. And doing it with one hand is hard. Art by Amanda Hilburn.com. Diane says the sound was better and Rosie likes the color contrast. Thank you very much. Okay, I will see you guys next time. Bye.